in that, please? Councillor Thomas, would you like to continue? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We'll have 30 seconds That's fine. I would just like to repeat my opening statements that I support the public's right to do this wholeheartedly, but I ask for strict evidence going to our viewers' scrutiny. I finalise by saying if you cut this out, it will be hospitals that suffer, it will be electric cars that suffer, it will be high tech coming into this, this uh, town. So I rest my case. Thank you. 70,000 trees. <laughs> Councillor Helgate, please. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Um, a thousand people have signed the petition, so it's right and proper that we're here to give it a full and respectful consideration. Uh, 5G is a huge technological step forward. Whichever nation uh, dominates the new wireless era will gain a powerful edge over rivals and competitors. The Internet of Things that 5G will usher in promises to revolutionise how we travel, how we shop, how we live. Make no mistake, digital information is power and the global competition is fierce. The next decade is about control of information in order to guarantee security, preserve liberty and defend national sovereignty. I for one believe you cannot be a sovereign nation if you don't have your own currency. And I'm delighted that plainly so many other people share that belief. But I also believe that you cannot pretend to be a sovereign state unless you can safeguard the data of your citizens, of your corporations, of your entrepreneurs and your innovators. I regret to say that we seem to have a government that looks at 5G as an exciting but costly public procurement project rather than what it is, an issue of national security. The government is only too keen to get into bed with the Chinese state when it should be learning a lesson from the Middle Kingdom and building a great wall to protect our economy and our democracy against those who have no respect for human rights, civil society or democracy. We live in an age of cyber attacks and cyber wars where the way to disable and deter your opponents is to blockade their digital technology. Just look at how we in the West deterred Iran's nuclear missile program through the Stuxnet cyber attack, look at how North Korea has used cyber attacks to maintain its ability to develop its weapons programs, and look at how Russia has reacted to global concern. And the public concerns about the health risks of 5G are of a global pattern, shared from Torquay to Toronto. Almost all governments across the world reassure their publics, con uh, correctly pointing out that the risks from 5G can be compared to the risks from alcohol, eating red meat or talcum powder. None of these things are clinically safe, nor is travelling by car, using public transport or sitting in an armchair. If we look for proven safety, we look not for an absolute assurance that no one will ever get hurt at any time ever, but for a scientifically tested and empirically evidenced level of risk. No one can prove to you that 5G is safe to all people at all times and in all scenarios. Because no one can prove the same for telephone lines, the main supply, or even the water supply grid. So where does this phenomenon of global concern come from? Well, one government is taking these concerns seriously, and it's using its global network of influencers and informers to spread the message widely. Our friends at Russia Today call 5G a dangerous experiment on humanity. And Russia is linking 5G signals to brain cancer, infertility, autism, heart tumours and Alzheimer's. All these claims lack scientific support, but somehow this fear continues to spread. Russia's aim is to tie the West in knots over 5G, provoking the natural public concern over any major new technology into a cause for division and distrust, so that the rollout of 5G is stalled and the economic advantages of 5G in advanced societies are curtailed until Russia can play catch-up. Russia today ran seven programs in 2019 on the health risks of 5G, claiming that it would expose children to cancer, increase learning difficulties, and even cause nosebleeds. A million uh, RT videos are viewed each day on YouTube. They're magnified and escalated by bloggers, Twitter feeds, Facebook, and a horde of other social media outlets including by the thousands of keyboard warriors employed directly by the Kremlin. Their aim is simple, 
to get genuine, believable Westerners to convey the message that they want us to hear so that the Russian origins of this campaign are buried under an avalanche of genuine concern, emotive personal stories and persistent nagging doubts. At no time does RT tell you that Putin is running out of 5G in Russia as fast as he can. And every channel of the Russian state is ramping up concerns about 5G in the US, Britain and the rest of Europe. I want the Council to stand firmly behind the defence of British values. I want to base our response on scientific evidence, transparency and due process. We need to counter the sensational with scientific and not give marginal views a megaphone to sow discord and doubt. I urge Council to look at this seriously, but not to pander to alarmism and extreme concern. Councillor David Thomas. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Well, I, look, I think what this debate has actually brought to the surface is a real opportunity for councillors to do their own research, to do a little bit of looking into, and because we've all got iPads and we've all looked and, and we've all got various bits of data. Um, and I've got a couple of concerns. Yeah. Councillor Amil. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. First of all, a big thank you to everybody who's, who's turned up here today, and uh, I understand your passion entirely. Uh, I also respect uh, my fellow colleagues, and I completely understand um, the scientific, uh, scientific um, uh, view and the importance of technology, but for me, not at any cost. I don't, I don't have the answer, but I feel this is the beginning of the journey. Thank you. I, for me personally, and that's my personal opinion, I have enormous concerns myself, and I think our duty is to help and to keep the public safe. Yeah, me. Oh, all of us. <laughs> Councillor Law. Well, I don't have anything really prepared to write. I want to respond to some of the things um, that have been said this evening. Uh, I think you guys get called as conspiracy theories, uh, but what I've heard about Russia and that tonight is of no concern to me, and that sounds more like tin foil to <laughs> Um, I can opt out of eating red meat tub, using talc powder and I don't drink alcohol. So, you know, it doesn't, none of these are, these wash with me, to be honest. Um, and I think people have been very selective here in the information they've put forward this evening. As always, there are two sides to every argument. Recently, uh, 180... Uh, 180 scientists and GPs, or not sorry, doctors of all kinds, <coughs> wrote um, expressing their concerns, wrote to the EU expressing their concerns about um, 5G, which will lead to a massive increase in involuntary exposure. This is the point, and this is the difference between what's come before. This is involuntary, there's no escaping it. House to house, Nathan to Nathan. to read a quote, and this is from one, a professor of oncology in Sweden, and he states that the telecom industry is trying to roll out technology that may have very real, unintended, harmful consequences. Scientific studies, both recently and over many years, have identified harmful effects on health when testing wireless products under realistic conditions. We are very concerned that the increase in radiation exposure by 5G leads to damage that cannot be reversed. So, I'm not going to talk about walking out the front of cars with red flags, Stevenson's <laughs> rockets. I'm talking about here today, now, and my children's future. So, I have three, four children actually, but three who are interested in science, one who's not at all. And of those three, the consensus is they're in their 20s, they, two 
are totally against 5G and they see it as an invasion of their personal right to be able to switch their internet off. These are internet addicted children, boys. But they have the right to turn that off. It is not going, we are not going to be constantly exposed to it. So I think there's been a lot of talk about the commercial benefits and that's a lot out there in what you've put forward and that's a lot of the information that's very, very easy to come by at the press of a button if you do a Google search. However, what isn't being discussed is about the consequences for humans, animals and plants. And to ignore that is, is negligent. And for us as a council... Yeah. Yeah. I think, I hope this goes to overview and scrutiny, and I hope they keep an open mind rather than some of the close opinions we've seen this evening. Thank you. Yeah.